Because in the only way they give up Colin Sexton is they drafted Darius Garland. Are they and gonna that play? was a bad pick. Yeah. Are they going to play both of them together? I yes. don't think so. Yes, they so are. The- but let's move into the final topic, and that is DeMar DeRozan trade rumors. And again, kind of like the Blake Griffin thing, there's nothing really out there that is saying that this is a thing. There's been speculation, like Shelberg and ESPN and the Shelburne, Jump have said. For your Shelburne, female other? Uh, they have said for a while that it's a possibility that it's a, he'll it's get a, traded. It's a possibility. Way, can we like, just throw out the resemblance between Ricky and uh, what's her first Ramona name? Shelburne. Ramona Shelburne. Ramona Shelburne. Like, he literally is our Ramona Shelburne. We both wore green on the uh, free agency. You did. On you the did. free agency live streams. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to bring up an, another uh, a couple great articles. Yes. We're saying now facts to lead off <laughs> these uh, these things. Fadeawayworld.net, our boys <laughs> coming back hot, reporting that uh, Chris Johnson at Chris Johnson NBA says Pistons magic and Bulls. So the Pistons not only are going to trade Blake Griffin, they're gonna they're gonna take on Demar Derozan, uh, but a, the Pistons magic for and Bulls Please are don't. three of teams that have spoken with the Spurs about a trade for DeMar DeRozan, according to sources. And let's check out Chris Johnson's uh, uh, credentials. He's got the NBA logo totally miscropped on his on his, on his his Twitter. And also, my, guy, my guy's got a great smile. Look he does. Guy. That's I, a great, very professional photo. Very great smile. He, he paid his cousin yeah. to take that photo. Oh. Um, my guy, Sean, why are you coming at people so hard today? Mm-hmm. My, guy, my guy Chris uh, has uh, 133 followers. So nice. shout, out, shout out Chris. He has no affiliation to any actual media source. Uh, but he also says Portland has growing interest in bringing back all-star po- uh, power forward LaMarcus Aldridge. There's mutual interest in reuniting, according to sources. Uh, so sources, strike again. Uh, yeah. we'll, have to, we'll have to do a topic about that next week. Um, but anyways, <laughs> let's talk about DeMar DeRozan trade rumors. He is going to be a free agent after this year. Uh, there is a player option. We'll see if he takes it or not. But if he doesn't, he will be a free agent. Um, 27.7 this year and then 27.7 next year. What teams should be looking for DeMar DeRozan? What teams are in the DeMar DeRozan options uh, or the market? Which teams could really take that next step with DeMar DeRozan? Dave, we started with you last time. So we'll start with my guy, Ricky Widmer. He's probably going to come out hot. I mean, with this one, I don't know if like... Blow it up? Y- Blow up well, Spurs? it's not a blow up the Spurs. It's just the mm-hmm. I don't know if like if I'm the Spurs, I don't know if tank like for how much <laughs> tank for Wiseman. No, um, I don't know how much he fits with that Spurs team as like a piece moving forward. I don't know if like I'd be yes, I got to give him a contract extension and he's going to be the future of this team next to Lamarcus. But when I look around the NBA, it's like. I almost look at teams to where even the teams that might want to use it as like a, hey, even if he doesn't take his player option or even if he does, we can then push him off the books after that year. But to get him, you're probably going to have to give up picks and or young talent. And I just don't know if there's a team in my mind that is ready to pull that like. The playoff teams, I don't know if there's anyone that wants to add him on. I don't even think like a team like Miami that Dave threw out during the Blake segment of like their star hunting. I don't think they want to go after yeah, DeMar, DeMar. might not be the yeah. best fit with uh, Jimmy. But I just I don't think there's a team out there that is either looking for a star or looking for um, a salary cap, like cap release that would want to give up young players and picks to get DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, I mean he's not as attractive as Blake Griffin is. I mean, you, you, I mean, well, Blake's beautiful. Uh, but you look at Demar, and I mean, Demar plays pretty much of an out, outdated game. Uh, I know Jake was coming in hot last year, uh, saying that uh, he's going to be a top five MVP finish. He was not. Oh, um, no. But he he was he was he was fine with the Spurs last year. He was up in field goal percentage. Um, he was lower in three point percentage, and, and and just fell off the face. I mean, he he was shooting three point six. Last year with Toronto, and that was a whole big thing. They were going to force him to shoot yep. more, and he was decent at it. He was shooting thirty-one percent from it, and then mm-hmm. he went from three point six attempts per game to two point six. Uh, so they just stopped shooting threes in San Antonio in general last year. They were they one of the like, better teams. Yeah, percentage they wise, they were one of the best teams. But that's the thing. They're like, if you can't shoot them, you're not allowed to shoot well, them. And when you, we go one for two each night, you're going to go like 50%. So it just adds up. Uh, but and, and he fell off in points, uh, 23 to 21.2. Um, obviously, dealing with LaMarcus, it's going to help a little bit, uh, worse a little bit. And this isn't like a Spurs team that was looking to, to run and gun or, or put up a ton of points. Um, so, I mean, he didn't really fall off too much. Um, he's just, I don't know if any team wants him just because of his play style. I mean, who wants a two? 
that can't shoot from the outside that doesn't play elite level defense. I mean, he is a great mid range player. I think he'd be great on the Spurs if they didn't have Lamarcus Aldridge. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's the thing that's holding them back more is Lamarcus. But really? I, I don't know who's more valuable to that team. I think Lamarcus might be more valuable. I just think that if if you're saying who would I rather start the Spurs with, I might lean to Mark. DeMar DeRozan over LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, mainly due to youth, um, but also I think just the way that they kind of do shape their team in playing inside the arc. I mean, DeMar is elite at that level. Yeah, no, I I tend to agree with the first piece of that. I I think that LaMarcus is definitely the more valuable piece on the Spurs right now to the Spurs organization. He's played incredibly tough. Um, They've been able to count on him. I know that we gave him a lot of flack for the playoffs uh, in the uh, past what was it two years ago now in the playoffs when Kawhi went down? Uh, he wasn't able to, you know, dominate and carry them. But I mean, I don't know who could have in that kind of situation. But I think DeMar DeRozan is one of those guys who, like you said, his value out in the open market may not be super high, but he is kind of like a, a uh, offensively, he's able to facilitate, he's able to rebound, he's good for his size. I would really like to see a team who maybe is looking for a great uh, addition to their team, like maybe a team like the Magic could take a stab at someone like that mm-hmm. to add another ball handler. Mm-hmm. Right now they've got Forney as their two, and behind that they got the offensive supernova. And That team doesn't have any shooters as it is. Really? Who's a shooter on their team outside of Fournier? I would argue DJ Augustine can shoot on that team. Aaron mm-hmm. Gordon can shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, really? You're in that one? I mean, I just when it comes to the magic, I just question that one. They've of got like, enough. Should they do it for him. in the last segment? Sean said, "Well, the magic don't have a star, right? Would this the be Rose like the? Star. But he's, he's a budget star. bigger star than what they have on their team right now. I would say, yeah. I mean, he, bigger he's, star than Aaron Gordon for sure. They've got Vucevic to stretch out the five. Aaron Gordon can stretch the four. You still have Jonathan Isaac, whose shot has been getting better every single year." I and mean, Mobile. yeah, and Fournier is actually the opposite. Fournier's shot's getting worse. Yeah. Uh, he was 34% going down so, from 379 and, and Gordon was, like, around 34%. I just don't think that, like, like, do you need to guard Aaron Gordon when he's out behind the arc? Yes. Eh. He, like, mean, do you, but do you need to he be— He blows by you, guys because they are challenging But you can him give him space is what I'm saying. He's not going to hit it. He's not going to—he's not a knockdown shooter. I'd, I'd like, have to look up if his— they're, If their offense was, numbers, but yeah. do I want Aaron Gordon driving or do I want him to shoot from the outside— Aaron Gordon Christian can shoot 10 yeah. threes a game. Like, <laughs> come on. I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. Um, Fair enough. I, I, I think, too, like, that's just saying, like, oh, I want a high-end vehicle, but then buying the bot, like, the, like, the I want. The performance model? Yeah, you're just getting the cheapest one. Like, I don't think DeMar DeRozan, like, is has he been a former All-Star? Yes. But is he a star? No. Like, that, I, I think we got to cut off the line I, somewhere. DeRozan's a very good player. I don't think he's a star. I mean, four-time All-Star, putting up good numbers, scoring over 20 points a game for the last six years. Which he's, which he's very good. What type of player would he be next to that would make? I mean, like, just look at they. At, Toronto added a real star, and they won. A, they won a <laughs> final. Like this was a team well, that kept no, getting. They didn't bounced. just add one real star. They added in a defensive stalwart at the five and Paul Gasol. They added in Danny Green as Marcus a. Hall. I'm sorry, Marcus Hall, not yeah. Paul. That man, old. Um, but yeah, no, they added in a great five. They added in a, a good swingman on the wing who can shoot through, who's just a three and D. He's the prototype of three and D before it even existed, okay. really. If you think I mean, they added Marcus All and Danny Green to DeMar DeRozan and that team, you think they won the finals? I honestly think they're closer. I don't think they would have won because Kawhi Leonard pulled out some of the most incredible ISO game that I've seen in because fucking he's Michael a Jordan. Star. Kobe Leonard. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's good. He's, he, he is good. DeMar DeRozan's very good. I didn't is say he was top, bad. I said is he a top 25 a player? Yes. No. Really? think top he's 25 not is not? Or is he's not a top 25 player. I think he's right in that 20 to 25 range. No way. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and count out 25 players for you. I will. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking. That, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking I mean, he's got one player like that's Orlando. already better on his team than LaMarcus Aldridge, so there's one. I think that a team like Orlando would benefit it's just it's a direct upgrade for them because they have the defense to cover up for any deficiencies from him he's another ball handler on the court which i know people are pushing you know for other guys on the team to ball handle but he really would be a, a great addition for them it just come down to price you know whether it's giving up any of their young talent i don't know how comfortable they would be doing with that i know they drafted chuma okay this year who i fucking love by the way 
But is he a guy who, you know, if you believe in Aaron Gordon and Jonathan Isaac long term, where does he fit into that plan? Is that a high upside pick where it's just like, look, we've got great value and we can take him here and maybe move him in the future uh, because other teams understand he's great and we only got him on the budget pick because of his injury so late in the year. I don't know. I think that that would be an interesting consideration for the Magic to make. Um, another team would be interesting. Honestly, I kind of cringe at thinking about like his fit on other teams because you're right because his spacing is so bad. So you try to find someone where he wouldn't be absolutely abused. But like New York, like no kidding, <laughs> they've struck out on so much that Yikes. I'm just like, I could see them taking a swing at uh, him. Right? It's, is that a, is that not a New York Knicks move? Ricky. The He's a name. He brings ta- he brings. It, it, it was the a Nick move. Yeah, it's definitely a Nick move. That's my point. No. And they're gonna have all those juicy contracts up in uh, December. So they made a lot of signings. Yes, they have five power forwards. You know that's dope and all. But I think that they're they're a team who would absolutely be happy to uh, take on someone, and especially with his contract where it is, it's like a no. It's almost a no risk move at this point mm-hmm. because you can add him, and if he plays well, you can extend his contract out in the future and be happy with that. And if not, you have cap space available. You know. I'm going to throw this out, and I don't even necessarily believe it would happen, oh, God. <laughs> but it's worth a conversation. Yeah. Could the Spurs use a, and it depends on the other team I'm going to mention, where they see themselves, are they going to dive into a full rebuild, mm-hmm. and what other packages they could get for this player, but could the Spurs say, hey, let's look at Washington and try to swing for the fences for a Bradley Beal trade. Is that at all possible in this round? Because with then Washington, I mean, you're looking at it to where, you know what, we still get, like, if you're still wanting to compete a little bit. Tell me the trade the, before you stick it Oh, I don't have screen. a trade. I'm oh, just okay, saying, like, no. a possibility no, of, like, no. could the Spurs swing for the fences, even if it's a three-team deal, if it's it would just be... them two, to bring because that's a deal. If I'm the Spurs, I go for that one, obviously. But it's like in order to do a Bradley Beal for DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan's not even the most important piece on the Spurs that they would be asking for. I could see them asking for someone like Lonnie Walker or DeJounte. Like they would ask for some of the younger pieces, even mm-hmm. Kelton Johnson. Like I think that's what the Wizards would want out of them. And it just, I know it's uncharacteristic of the Spurs to pull a deal like that, but. Because I, I mean, know. with Dejounte Murray, you got under, like that one's interesting because not only coming off injury, but he's an RFA next year. Like the injury might could play into that also, but like that's something too of like going into those negotiations. Kid how is that going to be exactly? And if I'm the Spurs, maybe it's like I'm okay with giving up a Dejounte Murray, knowing I've Why? got a Lonnie Walker because you're getting Bradley Beal. <laughs> Like, but that to me would be if I have to give I up wouldn't. if I have to give up Demar and Dejounte and some draft picks, and I get Bradley Beal, I push that button if I'm the Spurs. Uh, Dejounte, <laughs> Demar, Demar, and two draft picks, say like 2021, 2023 or something. No, I wouldn't do that. Cat coming off an ACL injury, Demar Derozan, who's older than Bradley Beal on a shorter contract, yes, but I mean I don't think that's really that important i think you can get more for bradley beal than that i mean in the two picks i mean they're not gonna be good because beal's gonna be signed for, like, for the next three years Keldon johnson on top of it or something like that Keldon ah. johnson doesn't move that needle Nothing. that much lonnie no. walker also 25 no i mean i think it, no that's it's, what i'm saying i'm i'm they'd have to give all for... three they'd have to give all three i mean yeah. they, they they deserve what the pistons deserve for blake griffin and probably even more because because of the Bradley position, position yeah, yeah the position he plays um, I agree I got twenty five by the way Lamarcus Lebron A D Kawhi P G Harden Westbrook Jokic Dame C J Embiid Butler Kyrie Kemba Vic Giannis Cat Luca K D Clay Blake Beal Drew Steph Gobert and you could even throw in Trey Young Devin Booker Zach Levine De- Darren Fox or Donovan Mitchell if you wanted to top forty player he's a top Martin forty Rosen. player there you go so <laughs> top thirty five maybe. I mean, you got to bridge that gap from a actual top twenty-five I player agree. in Bradley Beal to he to was them. a and star. He is no longer a star. Yeah, his games. I mean, the fact that the three balls Chris dropped off. Yeah, Chris Mid made an All Star game, but he is in that shadow. Um, I think just the fact that his three pointer fell off the face of the earth so hard. It's just not his game. Yeah, but like, 
You don't even like you showed us some hope on the Raptors at the end. You're like, hey, look, I'm gonna. Come but he was up. forced into that role. Right. That's the thing, and he wanted to do that for Toronto because that was his team, and that was the team that drafted him. That was a team that he was there for ten years, and there was no reason to do that because Pop wasn't pressing mm. it, and that wasn't his game. So I, I think in the end, like there isn't a team that like I would be like, oh my god, them with Demar Rosen would make me crazy. Like I don't think he's that type of player anymore, and especially for twenty seven million dollars. I don't see any deal being beneficial to the Spurs. Could. Or, I'm sorry, being beneficial to any other team. I think it would be beneficial to the Spurs because you get that money let's, off the contract. Uh, so the let's books. talk about contracts that are awful then. Andrew Wiggins. But DeMar Rosen that goes to a team that is desperate for playoff success. Yeah. And he fixes their That's problem. stretching it with DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> well, no, because he fixes their problem of... Wiggins' contract is so big and so long. Yeah. DeMar DeRozan can come in there basically on a one-year deal almost. But you're saying playoff success in DeMar DeRozan. Those things don't go hand in hand. He won games against everybody <laughs> but the one LeBron. I'm just saying, when, you, when your nicknames with the Kyle Raptors, Lowry are the trash bros. The Raptors just dominated saying. in the playoffs except for the Cavs. Mm-hmm. They were very good in the regular season. They had continued success over multiple years. He's a four-time All-Star. I mean... It's it's a definite downgrade from the Jimmy Butler, but you're also getting rid of that Wiggins contract. Mm-hmm. That could if, be a win-win. Pop could try to turn around Wiggins, make the kid try and use effort. I saw another Wiggins offseason hype video for the third year in a row now, and it's like, kid, we get it. You're uber talented, but you don't do the shit you need to to play seriously in the regular season. Is it the one that I sent the group chat last night? Yeah. Where they were like, oh, I'm trying to remember what like stupid little... Like, lights, camera, action that yeah. they put as their thing, and it's like, And again, Ooh. he looks great. He's so gifted. But they give him a, a, that giant contract that he did not earn, and I think that's an opportunity for Pop to be like, I can mold this kid. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I've got Smashes a young Smashes that like button. Smash that, that like put. button. He can mold him. <laughs> he fits in the timeline with a Lonnie Walker, mm-hmm. with a DeJounte Murray. Like, he is... That could be a win-win deal. I think it's the other way around, though. And yet again, Dave, I will take this as a, I did it to you in the live mock, so you're doing it to me, sniping off my screen I as I'm coming it, yeah. up. Like, I don't think Andrew Wiggins is the deal. Why the not? deal for me is if I'm the Spurs, A, I don't want Andrew Wiggins. B, I don't think the T-Wolves want to give up Andrew Wiggins. I think hey, they do. Let's pa- <laughs> I like, think they're willing to. Like, let's pair Cat, Wiggins, and Damar together. And to me, I think the piece that the Spurs would go after is Rocco. Give me a guy like Rocco who can add defense to this team, um, and he's locked down for three years. The only thing they would have to, like, the deal that I have here is the T-Wolves would get DeMar DeRozan. Rocco is like, the Spurs are like, that's who we want from the deal. And to make contracts work, they would have to eat the contract of um, Diang as well. But the T Wolves can throw them two draft picks. I just picked 2020 and 2022, but throw them two draft picks. And if I'm the Spurs, I'm happy with that. I get a guy like Rocco. Well, the Spurs win that trade by far. A veteran that Pop would want and could add defense to the team. They get two draft picks. And the T Wolves get a guy like DeMar that they can add with Cat and Wiggins to see no. if. Do they make can, a run in the West? Can, no. Can but I, do they make the playoffs? Maybe. Can, can I just Maybe. say that's like. Doing what you did to <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Like, it's like DeMar DeRozan's a worse Jimmy Butler. Like, you're putting Wiggins out of position again. You're losing away your court spacing 3 and D player. And you're just fucking that spacing up even worse and for Cat. you're giving Kat. up two picks. And you're giving up picks. Like, no. That's well, just could a, they get away I'm with sorry. giving up one pick? I, if you're if you're the you're giving them I don't want DeMar the DeRozan. most valuable I've... player, <laughs> and you don't like that's the thing as a Timberwolves, you have to, you have to make it sweeter for the Spurs. I get it, but like giving up Rocco is not worth it for them because he fits what they need to have next mm-hmm. to Cat in my mind. That's why I'm afraid of crunching that spacing down by playing Wiggins and Demar next to each other. That's worse than what they had with Butler in my mind. I, That's why I think the direct Wiggins and DeRozan swap it fixes contract situation for them, gives them a playoff uh, experience, All Star. It gives them someone who. Decent head on his shoulders. Like, there's never been a big deal around but Mark Rosen off the court. But see, that's the thing I think that's different here. If I'm the Spurs, if I'm not getting a player like Bradley Beal, mm-hmm. I don't want Wiggins locked down. Like, if I'm Why getting ri- if I'm getting rid of DeBar and I'm not getting a guy like Bradley Beal, mm-hmm. I want a guy that basically I'm either flipping or I'm bringing in 
young talent and draft. He is young talent. He's, he's not still the, twenty. He's, he's not young. the young he's talent. He's still what twenty three. He's young. He's not the young talent I want. He's he's but who, who's, the who's giving up that young talent? I mean, oh, I, like I said before, I don't think that <laughs> so trade is there. You, he's twenty four. You think okay, twenty four. So you think Demar Derozan is basically washed up trash? Oh and no, no one wants him. I I don't think there's a team that wants to give up the haul that the Spurs will be looking for. It's not that Demar is trash. It's that the deal just ain't right. Like we'll come to the table, talk things out. You know what? We're on different sides of it. We're done. Like, that's what this is going to be. I don't think he gets traded. With Minnesota, yes, you get an upgrade of pretty much what you have right now and a guy who just takes mid-range jumpers. He makes them, though. He makes them is, much more often. Different, if difference. it's true shooting percentage, it's an insane difference. I, I, does it, it, I don't, it doesn't make them a playoff team, like a for-sure playoff team. It makes I them mean, better. I mean, the West is tough, but it makes them better, notably. Maybe. I mean, like... Because you're that's the only team that you could probably bring up that I'd be like maybe and and with the Knicks too it's like what 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 what, 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 what like what do you have like Frank <laughs> pick from the plethora like, of maybes like Frank you get you get Frank and I I mean I'd love to see Frank as a spur you yeah get, you just have him play defense yep that's all I'd have to do he'd learn what, to play what the else rest. do they have like you could I mean here's the thing they are a like team. my thing is is I think the the only team that I like Demar Derozan on is the Spurs. The Raptors too, but that's just because of what he came from. But could you see I don't like, like him LA the... making a midseason deal to try to get him? No, that'd be horrible. The Lakers, you mean? Yeah. Okay. I don't. Oh, well, I would because he's an that? LA kid, and LeBron so? needs to ruin his spacing more. Yeah, that <laughs> seems like a horrible. That seems like a plink guy. Actually, <laughs> <I> see, <laughs> now you're starting to think. Do I like it? No, Rob Plinka <laughs> might. That's exactly what I'm saying. You got a hometown guy giving up Coos? Bring another star. <laughs> what are you up giving Coos? up? Like nothing. They don't have anything. I don't know. I don't. I don't see a deal. <laughs> this is why I think NBA journalism is just going down the hill after this whole Russ thing because there's nothing to write about. Well, I and think we're, just, we're like, just looking for that next star to move because we've had I so think much LaMarcus. volatility. You think Lamar? Okay, yes. Let's, let's attend that, that's to that. the thing is I think that with with all of this going around, yeah, the only team that I like Demar Derozan on is the Spurs and the Raptors. Mm. And the thing that I think might be not holding them back, but. The only thing that I, I think that you could look at to improve the Spurs might just be to get that LaMarcus Aldridge contract off the books. But even then, he's only guaranteed $7 million, partially guaranteed $7 million next year. Um, so in the end, it's like, is it necessary to move away from him? And with that, there's a lot of young guys in that one and two slots that could take up time away from DeMar DeRozan that I might like. Yeah, in I mean, that spot basically better. ran him at the three for half the season. Yeah, Lonnie Walker injuries. was a stud in, in summer in league, league. and we'll I... talk about him soon. But like he was a he was a monster in summer league, and, and we Dejounte Murray is going to be coming back, and mm-hmm. Bryn Forbes was great last year. Like just shooting lights out. I, I just I don't. You still have Patty Mills and Derek White. Like you, they have so much talent at the one and two, mm-hmm. and they drafted Keldon hopefully to play the three for the future. And I just wonder, like you need a four or five that you can trust. I don't know if moving away from Lamar Aldridge. I think Pop's not going to move on from anyone. He is too damn old well, to rebuild. Let me throw. He's out, like, I'm going to compete until I can't compete no more. Mm-hmm. Let me throw out a wild card here. Wild card trade. This is one that and went into. First off, it depends on that. it depends on how Dejounte comes back from his injury, and later on, like this would be a trade deadline kind of a deal depending on how these Spurs are thinking the RFA um, negotiations could go with, J- J- with Murray. I'm not even going to try to say it. Duh. No. I said it earlier, this is the off and now season. I screwed this it up. This is the offseason. Duh. Murray. Duh. DeJounte. There, there you I go. said it right. Sometimes I get in my you own way You could just mentally. stop. I see what's on um, your screen, Ricky. I don't care. I'm going to say it. If DeMar it's De- bad, we'll just send the podcast. DeMar DeRozan it. to the Cavs. Caleb and Colin Sexton to the Spurs. What? Where, Thanks for joining us today. Why would they give up Colin Sexton? Because in the <laughs> only way they give up Colin Sexton is they drafted Darius Garland. Are they and that play, was a bad pick. Yeah, are they going to play both of them together? I yes. don't think so. Yes, they so are. So by the trade deadline, if they're thinking to move on from Caleb, they might have to sweeten it with Colin Sexton to get a DeMar that, hey, he might work for a little bit with us, 
but he's not locked down like K-Love is. That's the wild card. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is this is something. That was, <laughs> we we yeah. covered a lot of Clutch Point articles, so thank them for uh, for, for writing whatever they did. Um, and also, uh, I think we are the DeMar DeRozan of podcasts. The top 40 <laughs> podcasts, you know? Maybe not top 25, uh, but top 40 podcasts. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to John for joining us as well, talking Summer League. Thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon as well well uh you can join the discord for one dollar it'd be great thanks for dave and ricky for going to summer league and getting the great content that they did and we want to thank you for joining us and spending your time with us thank you so much for doing so for dave oster for ricky Wibber. i'm sean anderson we'll see you next time